Welcome to day two. My channel this is redhead goes healthy if you are new here i am embarking on a 21 day reset challenge called the mind body and soul challenge if you're interested in learning about the details and what exactly i'm doing you can read my daily goals below or you can watch the video up above so today is day two today is a tough day <laughs> um i'm filming this part of my video at 12 30 p.m I've already done my workouts, which I'll show you in a bit, and I've already done my reading and my note taking, so I'll also begin with that. And then I will do a final check-in at the end of the video. This is a tough day because this is, I'm doing a 5-2 method, and this is the day where I am restricting my calories by 75%. I'm gonna do my very best to to hit the numbers, but if I feel like I'm just feeling unwell or I need to eat more calories, then I will do that. I actually, you'll see in a bit, I worked out today and I don't want to put myself in a position where I actually need more calories. So I've decided to weigh in every day and today I weighed in at 181.4, which again, it's not a real pound of fat that I lost. It's probably mostly water weight. And yes, I hit a bit of a deficit yesterday yesterday, but not near, I didn't hit a 3,500 calorie deficit. So it's just to remind you if you're watching and you're also on a weight loss journey and you are using the scale to just remember, like, I really think weighing in maybe once a week is the most accurate representation of how you're doing, but I am going to do it every day just to get a sense of just getting back into that habit because I don't want the weight to creep up again. And I feel like the best way to do that is to weigh in every day. And if I ever find that it's messing with my progress, then I will go back to weighing once a week. So we're all about flexibility here. Let's begin with my mind. Okay, so today we are in the dark wood of error. If you remember, Martha Beck is taking us through this journey based on Dante's Divine Comedy. The comedy begins with the dark wood of error, which is this metaphor for feeling misalignment, feeling lost, feeling hopeless. After that, of course, we're headed toward hell, purgatory, and then finally heaven. So today was all about symptoms of the dark wood of error. So I thought what I would do was uh, share the six symptoms of the dark wood of error that I read for today. And maybe some of them will resonate with you guys. I know some of them resonated with me, some of them did not. So let's just get right into it. First of all, I should say that the main reason she thinks that some of us might be feeling kind of lost has to do with the disconnect between who we really are and the expectations of society. So a lot of us kind of feel like we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, but it's not necessarily what we truly want to be doing. There was a really good quote that I wanna share with you guys. Even after doing everything we can to be good, we don't feel good. I really, really like that. I really resonated with that. Again, being a people pleaser, really trying hard to be good, a good student, a good you know, person at work, but then not feeling like I actually feel good about the things that I'm doing. Like those are two different things. All right, so six symptoms of the dark wood of error syndrome, as she calls it. Symptom number one, feeling purposeless. That's a big one. That's a big one. I feel like you can have moments where you feel like, what is my purpose? Or this like giant existential idea of what a purpose is. But you could also have this feeling just with like little things. Like if you're at your job and you're like, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm doing. Am I just like making money for this company? Is my purpose to work with people? I don't really like people. Like what is my purpose? So it's this sense of feeling kind of just lost without a purpose. Symptom number two is emotional misery. Pretty harsh. 
And again, I don't think it's something that you feel all the time, but if you find yourself feeling kind of just joyless in your day-to-day -day activities, then I think that would count as one of the symptoms of being in this like place of misalignment and feeling lost. Number three is physical deterioration. She makes a, a really interesting point here that oftentimes if we feel like we are suffering emotionally, it can manifest itself in the form of physical ailments or physical deterioration. She goes through this whole story where she was people pleasing her whole life. She grew up Mormon and she went to college and then became the perfect atheist to like fit in with her friends. And then at age 18, she actually developed some severe physical issues. So I do think that there are studies out there that, you know, talk about the connection between suffering emotionally and then that manifesting in the form of like physical ailments or physical problems, uh, which is kind of fascinating when you think about it. The way that I kind of think about this for myself is that I can never hide when I'm depressed or feeling depressed or feeling miserable. I can put on a brave face for the world. I can be completely fine at work with my friends, my family, but when I'm alone, I'll eat food to help me cope with the deep feeling of depression or sadness that I'm experiencing. And then it manifests in the form of fat. So a depressed person who uses food as her comfort, she's always gonna like be, it's always gonna show itself to others and to you know yourself. Uh, or herself. So I feel like I kind of fit into that particular like category of physical deterioration. Number four is consistent relationship failures. Yeah, I, I mean, she makes a great point here that if you are not feeling like your true self, how are you able to actually enter into a relationship with somebody else? Those relationships are typically toxic. It's not that you're like completely alone, but you're consistently failing at partnership or relationship. Number five is consistent career failures. Same sort of deal that if you feel like you're doing something that is not really aligned with what you really want to be doing, like your authentic self and what you're actually passionate about, then you're probably not gonna, you know, do well in that industry or that career choice. And then finally, number six is the one that I think all of us can relate to. The, the number six syndrome is bad habits that you just can't seem to break. So I think there's like this understanding of you're not only lost in the woods, but there are times when you feel like you can't even get out. You don't know how to break free from the bad habits that sort of potentially put you into the woods. So that's all my reading for today. I think tomorrow we're supposed to learn like how to get out of the woods or at least start that journey. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you tomorrow again for the next installment. And now the body. And the soul. In order to cultivate courage from within. So set yourself up in a comfortable position, root down through your seat and rise up tall through your spine. When you're ready, go ahead and close your eyes or you can gaze softly down your nose at one point that's not moving. And we'll get started. Take a few moments to consciously turn your awareness inward. Let yourself land in your body. Feel your legs solid and rooted underneath you. your back strong and tall behind you. And let your front 
be open and receptive, soft even. Notice how it feels to be your own support. You have the courage and the strength to face whatever may come your way. Courage is not the absence of fear. It's the ability to notice and honor fear and move forward anyway. On your next inhale, say silently to yourself, I am strong. Exhale, I am courageous. Inhale, I am strong. Exhale, I am courageous. Stay with this mantra and with your own breath. As you breathe here and fill yourself up with your own strength, with your own courage, feel your back tall and supportive behind you, and let your front be soft, open, and receptive. that you have the strength, you have the courage to face whatever comes your way, to embrace it, to receive it, not to turn away, not to harden, but to stay open. Inhale, I am strong. Exhale, I am courageous. Begin to sense yourself in the space around you. And as you're ready, slowly float your eyelids open, staying connected to that courage you found within. I'm Anna Greenberg. Thank you for choosing Peloton Meditation. Stay courageous till next. All right, I will see you all at the end of the day when I go over my daily goals checklist. All right, this is the end of the day. My weight this morning, as I said, was 181.4. I read 10 pages of the book. I closed my Apple ring and the total uh, move is 680, total calories burned, 2200. I hit the water goal quite easily. Uh, I follow the 5-2 plan for the most part. I definitely reduced my calories today. Uh, we're just going to call this like a reduction day. And I consumed 950 calories today total. So it was 600 to 900. I'm okay with that. I feel like I needed the calories that I had. Um, so I'm going to check that off. Meditate for five minutes. And film and upload this video.